Good morning, folks. We've got Exoplanet News, an incoming coronal hole and earthquake watch, one article on space radiation and health, and another that might not make a lot of sense. But let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. We'll be looking at SDO frames of the last 24 hours today instead of the charts because there wouldn't be anything to see there. No solar flares. The solar wind is calm, and so is Earth's magnetic field. The bright central region is the sunspots, and they look to be less dangerous than they did yesterday as they continue to decay under the Earth-facing quiet effect in that trailing portion in there, last bastion of flare potential in this grouping today. Turns out, we're just left with plasma filament action, but it is not eruptive. It is mostly confined to the limbs, and in terms of something to keep an eye on, we do have a trans-equatorial extension of the northern coronal hole, look just behind and extending south of the bright active regions for the darker patch. We're five days away from having that stream hit Earth, but the earthquake effect should begin before that. You can see on Gong it is green, indeed the northern opening. We had two volcanoes get active in the West Pacific, Sakurajima with a smoke and ash eruption, and another in the Philippines where steam events are dominating there. If anyone remembers Kepler 452b, it burst onto the exoplanet scene news due to being only slightly larger than the Earth and having a nearly identical orbital distance. It is considered one of the best candidates for Earth-like planets discovered to date, but we have a new paper out this morning describing why it will take a very lucky combination of circumstances for that planet to be habitable, with atmospheric pressure working against it the most in this analysis. Up next, turns out the cosmic rays have double the cancer risk that was previously thought to exist, and it's not like they were thinking it was harmless as a baby bunny beforehand. August Dunning gave a great talk on this at OTF 2017. He's already agreed to come back for next year, by the way. It's called The Reason to Go to Mars. You can find it here on YouTube, and it includes a good deal of explaining why the current mainstream folks discussing Mars missions might be fighting a losing battle with our current technology. Last article today is about a super cold nebula, the boomerang, and this is the one I said might not make sense. They say it is being accelerated so quickly by a stellar collision that it is losing material and cooling down to half a degree Kelvin above absolute zero, which is much colder than ambient space. Okay, furthermore, if absolute zero is where all thermodynamic motion stops, how is this energy-driven, accelerating superfast material cooling down to almost nothing? Seems a data interpretation issue to me. Energy that charges up and blasts out material also makes it colder. Yeah. Folks, remember, on June 15th, just 10 days from now, we'll be giving away two free tickets to Observing the Frontier 2018, three free hotel nights, and a $200 travel voucher for one lucky member of SuspiciousObservers.org. Have to have logged into the website in the last month to enter the drawing. And also remember, prize for QuakeWatch.net jumps up to $400. The threshold magnitude is only 7.0 for this first one, and it also comes with a free ticket to the conference. We've got the wind maps, null school up through the atmosphere, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.05 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.